Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand. And now I'm a work at home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you. So scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, friends. I'm so excited to be back with you this week. How are you? We are going through a cold snap here in San Antonio, Texas, something a little rare, other than back in 2021 when our power went out for like three or four days. And it, <laughs> now whenever it gets cold, I actually love the cold, but it totally triggers me because we had no power and that would be scary right now with a newborn. But so far, so good. I think our power just went out for a little bit. We're bundling up and keeping warm. And I'm, I'm frankly pretty happy about it. But it's funny because I don't know what you guys are going through at the moment, but it shuts our city down. <laughs> we can't handle the cold here at all. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's new. And Little Hunter is growing so much and getting so interactive and so fun. And Sweet Lorelai, I feel, is starting. I'm, I don't want to like count my chickens before they hatch. Because if you listen to the last couple episodes, it's been something else watching this poor thing adjust to, <laughs> to having a, a brother. But um, she, I, I would say she's starting to like hit her stride a little bit. Um, she's about to turn eight next month. And she's getting a golden retriever puppy for her birthday present. It's like our dream dog. And we're doing it a little early, just like help her. And so it's it's good it's good stuff going on over here. We're having a lot of fun. And I have been working my tush off getting ready to come back to you guys for maternity leave and be able to serve you with different things and get the podcasts produced and just like figure out how I'm going to wrangle all this. Um, but it's going really well and I've been able to build you guys some resources already. So we have to recap that before we get into today's stuff, which is going to be lit. It's awesome. Um, I do want to address this because so many of you, and thank you, so many of you took the time to vote on the survey last time telling me what services would be like the most important to you, like what you want me to prioritize in terms of like coming back from maternity leave. I I, I don't know if I should be surprised. I was surprised. Like the Etsy shop review service won by an overwhelming majority. Like the, the vast majority of you were like, we really want you to do Etsy shop reviews, which is something I've never offered before. Um, so, so I'm doing that. It's open. It's on my website. I'll link it. I'm a little scared, like no promises. It's staying around forever, but I've done some prototypes and worked with a few clients already to like get my, um, to get a really good flow and to get a really good product for you. And so that's, it's there for you. I've created it. You're welcome. Thank you for voting. Um, and we'll see. And then some of you were definitely like, no, I really want that one-on-one zoom session that you used to do. And, um, and so I will do a couple of those a month. I will offer maybe like eight sessions max per month for those of you who really need that more of that one-on-one, not just a shop review, but you want to sit face to face and talk through some stuff. I think that is important. And I do love getting to connect with you guys. So that's available now to you just in a very limited fashion. Um, it'll kind of go up and down, like it'll, it'll go on and off the website based on my availability. So there's that. And then um, a fair number of you were interested in the monthly mastermind, which I'm not going to lie, like I'm really excited about that kind of idea um, where you'd get like ongoing education and support and shop reviews. Like we would just like be in a group together, like where this would regularly happen and just have like kind of access to me and, and a positive business community to help you. Because if there's anything I've learned, the Facebook groups that are like Etsy focused, they can be really harsh. Like a, you don't get correct information all the time. B, people can be really nasty um, and judgy. And C, like you got people stealing your ideas and stuff. And and I would run a really tight ship. Like we'd have a very healthy community that like helped each other, supported, only positive, and you get kicked out if you don't. So, okay, so that's on my radar. I really want to do that maybe later in the year. Um, 
and a number of you did want that. But I, so I wanted to give you guys a recap. That's where we're at. I'm excited. And then um, I've also launched an Etsy SEO workshop, uh, which you'll hear more about later in this episode. But I just wanted to like say that right now, because one of the things I'm offering is if you do a um, an Etsy shop review with me, one of the options is you can get the SEO workshop discounted with it as kind of a little bundle. Because if you're going to get a shop review, you need to be able to know how to do your SEO going forward. Like that's like the number one most important thing for sure, like to learn um, with that. So this is like the longest intro ever. I hope you guys are sticking with me, but I wanted to like just give you the 411 and everything. Oh my gosh, how old am I? I'm showing my age saying 411. Hopefully you're just cackling at me, which is completely appropriate right now. Um, so yes, that is where we're at. That course is now available. Um, it's a super bargain. So grab that if you need SEO help. I'm literally showing you how I do all of my, like it shows you everything. <laughs> Ooh, it's good. It's good stuff. So, okay. That's like our little catch up. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm, I'm here. I'm mostly back. I'm figuring it. I'm still taking a little longer to get back on emails, but we're, we're like in the boat. We're paddling forward. And today, for our podcast episode, one of our favorites is back on the podcast this week. We will be chatting with Jenny from the shop, who is one of our tippy top go to POD print on demand experts, and she's a personal friend of mine. Jenny's the real deal. She's so precious. I, you know, I've known her for over a year now, and she's just so genuine. Like, she's one of those people I talk to all the time. We collaborate all the time. We help each other all the time. And she is a no scarcity like genuinely got your back. There's not a mean bone in her entire body. She's an absolute Disney princess. So those of you who um, haven't met her yet, just in case, a little bit about her. She was a teacher, which makes complete sense. She like taught, you know, elementary school and I'm sure she was amazing at it, but she got super burnt out and um, learned, taught herself print on demand. She like started learning about print on demand and selling on Etsy. I'm going to do the short version. She replaced her entire teaching salary she resigned from teaching in June of 2021 because she's making a full-time income selling print-on-demand on Etsy. She and her husband and daughter literally moved to Greece because that is where her husband is from, and she loves it. They love it there. So they spend most of the year there, and they come back for a few months here. And then because of print-on-demand Etsy, they, they can work from anywhere. And her husband has a – she's taught her husband. He has a shop now. Her parents who are in the 60s have print-on-demand shops, and – um. You may have seen have seen Jenny on TikTok. She's over 68,000 followers on TikTok because she does tons of amazing videos on the subject on like how to do print on demand um, for Etsy. So she's teaching a lot of others how to obtain financial th freedom through Etsy and print on demand. So you should 100% check out her first episode if you haven't heard it, which I will link in the show notes because she literally shared exactly how to get started with print on demand on Etsy. It is it is so detailed, It is, but it's not overwhelming. And it's not like you feel like you need to be watching a tutorial. Like you can listen to her casually with whatever you're doing and learn so much from that episode. It was a treasure trove episode. But today's difference, rather than like just the general, you know, POD stuff, which is great and I'm glad we have it, but we're going to focus on the topic of design because it's one thing to get all excited about the potential with print on demand. Like and I'm here for it, but it's another one entirely to be able to actually create designs that will sell like you have to learn. You don't have to be already be a graphic designer, but you're going to have to learn. Um, and Jenny had that experience for sure. Like as she's going to share, she did not design well at first. She had to make a lot of ugly ones and learn a lot of little strategies before she got good at it. But now she's a best-selling designer in the print-on-demand space. And she's you know, that's why she's making a full-time income, you know. She's learned how to crack that code of figuring out what will sell, super big key, and how to create it with like the right aesthetic. So... This is a totally new topic for us. I hope you're as excited as I am. I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's like really needed. Let's dive in and welcome Jenny to the podcast. Yay. Hi, Jenny. Hi. How I'm so excited. You? I'm great because I'm with you. How are you? I'm great because I'm with you as always. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I'm kind of extra geeking out today because you literally just got back to Greece. Like you are literally jet lagging right now. <laughs> I, yes, I think I'm on the upswing now. We're, I'm good now. Yeah, but it's uh, a different You're days. a unicorn. I cannot, <laughs> especially, I cannot. Um, no. And um, you, 
Okay, well, we'll get into like real stuff. Okay, guys, you're just gonna listen to two friends talk for a second because that's just, <laughs> you know, that's how we all roll right now. But like you are like buying a house there. You're like, you're like moving into your dream house here soon. Yes, we're super excited. Um, we are in our home now, but we're outgrowing it because we are expecting another baby in April. So that's another change since the last time I have been on here. Um, and yeah, we've been in the process of house hunting and we found our dream house. And as of today, it's ours. So we're really excited. Congratulations. I'm so Thank excited you. for you guys. Thank um, you. I can't even imagine living situations in Greece, you know, like my context, I, I mean, I've, I have been overseas. I haven't been to Greece, but my context is like, um, what was that HGTV show where they showed you like tours of international houses and people house hunting? Oh, I can't. Oh, house hunters. International. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, like, so my context is like caves, like carved into like houses carved into caves or whatever. <laughs> like, yes. No, it's not like that. It's more like modern, but that those are super cool. Um, but, but I like, should have like reached out to that show. Like, what was I thinking? We should have reached out to that show for this whole process. <laughs> Why didn't we think of that? We definitely did not. Um, sure. But I'm so impressed that you can get like a house over there that'll be, you know, you you need the space with the baby coming. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone, context, context. <laughs> Most of you know Jenny because this is her third, right? Third time on the podcast? Oh, yeah, it is actually. You're right. Because I was Yes, because we yeah. did the original print on demand episode, which is epic, and I will link because it was so good. And then we did with Anastasia, our our friend Anastasia, we did like a we did a round table. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I can't even remember. Was it like it was like last year? It was your something. last episode before your baby. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Yeah. Before the summer. It was before the summer. Yeah. Um, that was a really good one. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, you're like one of my print on demand go to experts, but you're the first person to ever come on talk about print on demand. So you guys, first of all, her first episode, she literally tells you exactly how to get started and do print on demand. It's one of yeah. those generous amazing it's to this date like my most downloaded episode ever it's it's big and it deserves that so go back and check that out if you want to hear the background but like for context jenny let's just do a little dab of your story since we're talking about you just got back to greece and people are okay. maybe like excuse me what so please okay. tell us all right i'll give you a snippet and if you want more then definitely go back to that first podcast um because i rambled on for far too long about my story. So you'll get all the deets there. But basically, I was a teacher for eight years, um, felt pretty burnt out and lost my passion in it and just felt like there was way more to life. Like I was just done with trading my time for money. And I was like, there's got to be another way. Like I was just exhausted. And then I had my daughter and that was like my driving force. I wanted to be able to stay home and watch my daughter grow up and travel with my family and ultimately move to Greece. Um, That was like the ultimate goal. Um, So I did some side hustle researching. I wrote a book and thought I would be super successful with that, which I wasn't, but that's okay because that's the door that led me to finding about all about um, Etsy print on demand when I was doing research um, on writing a book. It's a whole crazy story. But anyways, <laughs> so as soon as I found out about Etsy print on demand, I just dove in um, and never looked back. So basically, I started Etsy print on, De- print on demand in 2020. In 2021, I quit teaching at the end of that school year. And in 2022, we moved to Greece. And then now it's 2023, and we're having our second baby and buying our dream home. So it's a pretty cool timeline. And like I said, if you want like more details, go back to that first podcast where I share all the deets. I feel like the story is one of the best parts, though, because your it's process funny. of how you came to print on demand in the end like, yeah. it's a little bit of a cliffhanger. Like, I, I remember the first time you're telling me, and I'm just like, my jaw's on the ground, like, every 30 yeah. seconds. Uh, yeah. But it's so cool, because now you kind of go back and forth. Like, your folks are here in the States, and so you come here for a few months a year, and then you go back to Korea. Yeah. It's, like, so fun. I mean, I can't wait to see what you do with that baby doing that travel schedule. Oh, but... gosh. I know. I'm a little bit nervous for that, but I think we're going to figure it out. But, but yeah, that was one of my goals, too, was to be – first, it was to be able to quit teaching – then it was to be able to like move to Greece and then it was to be able to like fly comfortably 
to and from Greece, from America, like whenever we wanted to. And we made it happen, which is pretty cool. Your story is magical. It's as magical as you are. It really is. And I know that it is. And I'm super grateful. Um, There's a lot of, there was a lot of hard work and effort and sweat and tears behind that whole story, but it was like so worth it to get to where we are now. So it's one of my favorites for sure. Okay. Well, this is a completely different episode than we've done before, like with you or anybody else, because we're going to be focusing on design, which (laughs) I think is one of the most needed things in the print on demand space is like helping people figure out this whole design beast. Yeah. So I would love to start though, because I think it's a really good context and setup. Like what are you currently seeing as like the biggest challenges right now for new and, and maybe even existing sellers in the print on demand space, which is like what's okay. happening right now. All right. So aside from like design, cause we're going to totally get into all that. Um, when I do a shop audit or if I just like stumble across Etsy shops in general, that aren't that are new shops or they might have been on for some time and they're just like lacking in sales. The main things I'm seeing are that these sellers are um, designing or uploading product uh, products that are in like way too saturated of niches. So it's really hard for a new shop, especially, to break out into a broad niche like let's say teaching or nurse nursing um nurse like nurses um the big broad niches are hard to break through and i see a lot of people designing in those areas and i don't want to scare people away from designing in saturated niches because you definitely can break through eventually Uh but it's just harder as a new seller Um, it's important to find niches that are beneath those like that where there's more um more demand less competition um and we can get into that later on too um in this podcast but that's one of the biggest things i'm seeing is they're just they're going to be lost you know their designs are going to be lost when you're competing against these top sellers that have been in it for a while and are already on the first page um another thing i see is seo they're not, they're not doing their SEO properly, which is titles and tags. Um, I was guilty of this when I first started Etsy. Okay. I would name my things like very odd, <laughs> odd titles that people would never type into the search to find me. So <laughs> that's something. Um, and then little things, even like the mock-ups. So One is your mock-up aesthetically pleasing. I like to purchase my mock-ups on off of Etsy. I just go to the search and I'll type in the brand name of the shirt and then mock-up. So Bella Canvas 3001 t-shirt mock-up. And there's a ton of great mock-ups on there. Do not use the printing company mock-ups. Do not, do not, do not. They are not aesthetically pleasing. And I see people do this all the time. I don't know if it's because they're like lazy or they think it's not that big of a deal, but that little step like is huge. You need to buy a couple of mock-ups. You don't have to buy a ton, but maybe like three to five mock-ups. You can use them over and over again. So that's something. Um, and then obviously like the design piece of it. Um, I see a lot of new sellers struggling with their designs, which is a natural part of the process. <laughs> um, I went yeah. through it as well. It's, it's definitely a learning curve unless you're like a graphic designer. Um, but a lot of people just getting into Etsy print on demand aren't, and that's okay. Um, if you listen to all my tips and tricks on how to navigate (laughs) your, through your designs, um, so that you can still sell on Etsy, even if you're not an artist. Okay. I'm going to, this is so funny because I've just been getting emails on this recently. I'm going to take 10 seconds and explain what a mock-up is. So Uh you guys, if you sell something like a t-shirt, you, it's amazing because you can sell it without ever having to have, like have made one or worn one. And what you do is you buy a photograph that was taken by someone else who's a professional photographer who has a blank, like a totally blank shirt on a, like on a person as a picture. And they're 
they make them typically, you got to pay attention to this. They make them typically look really aesthetically pleasing. Whereas if you were to try to take a picture of it on me, we'd have all kinds of challenges. (laughs) They have the right model. They have the right shape. They have the right everything to make the shirt look its best. And that way you can just take your designs and use something like Canva or better. Actually, Jenny's got a better one. She's going to tell you about it's easier to put your design on the shirt. And that way you can like sell it. You can test it before you've had to make one. Yes. So for the couple people who don't know what a mock-up is and they're emailing me, which is totally, you totally can do that. Email me, please guys. But that's what that is. It's where you use someone else's picture and you put your design on it so you can Mm -hmm. test and sell the product without having to have it or without having to take your own pictures. Was that, would you add anything to that, Jenny? I would just say, um, the only thing I would add is that just make sure that your design is saved as a PNG file, which means transparent background. So when you, you're going to, in whatever design app you're using, whether it's Canva or GoDaddy Studios or Procreate, you're going to bring your mock-up photo in and then you're going to upload your design. And since it'll be a PNG file, it'll have transparent background. So there's not going to be like a block square behind it. You know what I mean? It'll be a transparent background and it'll be on the shirt. And this is a little tricky too, because you have to play around with the opacity of the design. You have to lower the opacity a little bit so that I typically lower it between like 85 and 95. There, You'll see a little button either on Canva or go to Daddy Studios, whatever you decide to use that says opacity. Lower your design opacity between 85 and 95. You want to make it look like your design is printed into your shirt. Because if you put up a mock-up photo on Etsy that's really bright bright and vibrant, when the person has it in their hands, you're going to get a lot of customer service issues and bad reviews because they're going to say, my shirt is not as vibrant as the product image. So by lowering the opacity, it makes it look more real. It looks like the ink was printed into the shirt. There's so a lot of last year. little yeah, details. Yeah, it's no, so many, so many tweaks, right? There's so many things you can do to make it look better. But ha- but like like side note, this cracks me up because you taught me this um, last year about the opacity, and yeah. ever since you did, um, whenever I'm doing like shop reviews and coaching and all that, and I look at them and I can tell when they haven't been, and I'm like, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> like once you know and you've seen the difference, because here's the thing too, it's it's great when the shopper can't tell that it's not the real shirt, that they yeah. can't tell that it's a mm-hmm. mockup, and doing that really helps it like sink in. Yeah. So I that's like such a good pro tip and now you've got me judging everyone but yeah well and like unfortunate excuse me I'm getting like a crazy <clears throat> voice thing um the craziest part is that I learned that through experience <laughs> through <laughs> <laughs> there were a good amount of bad reviews and a good amount of annoying customer messages where I was like oh, okay this is not looking real so I figured out how to do the opacity <laughs> Gosh, thanks for taking one for the team on that. That's awesome. Yes, I got you guys. I got you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, so, okay. While we're um, chuckling, let's like, let's just like take a minute and talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because one of the top reasons that sellers really struggle in the print on demand space is like, I, should, I don't know if I should, it's like ugly designs. I, I mean, I know that when I'm doing, and yeah. this isn't typically shop reviews, usually someone who's coming for a shop review has better, does not have really ugly designs. But if I'm like looking for other, you know, other examples to show them everything, so many shops out there, I'm just like, how do they think that's going to sell? Like, did they look at that design and think like, I would wear that or my sister would wear that or my cousin would yeah. wear that or someone. So please. Listen, like- I will be the first person to tell you that I do not feel uncomfortable at all by talking about like. <clears throat> the ugly design thing because I used to be an ugly designer. Like, <laughs> so I, it's allowed to come out of my mouth because when I look back at my beginning designs, they were atrocious and cringeworthy and embarrassing. We literally, I was like um, cleaning up my one laptop because I just got a new laptop and I was going through older files and my husband and I were like keeled over laughing at some of the designs that I found from the very start. I should do like a little video on that and show it. (laughs) They were embarrassing, but it's okay. Okay. It's all right. So here's the thing. Everybody, like most people, unless you're a graphic designer, your designs are going to be rough (laughs) from the start. They're going to be, they might be a little ugly and they might be a little bit rough and, but the weird thing about it is you're not going to notice yet. You're going to think that you have really great designs. So 
it's like a painful process to eventually realize that your designs aren't that great. Um, <laughs> so basically, you know, what it is, is you need to put up ugly designs to learn how to do this business. It's okay yes. to be messy in the beginning. You need to be messy in the beginning. Any person that's good at anything in this world was messy first with anything, not even just print on a man, not like anything that you've ever done. You were messy first, even learning how to walk. We fell down a bunch of times and kept getting back up again. It's just part of the process and it's okay. And there's no way through it unless it, there's no way through it, but to go through it and to be messy and to learn along the way. So I think it's so good. Yeah. I think it's true. I think all of us, let, and hello, even the graphic design people, when they started graphic design, their stuff was ugly. Yes. Even Picasso. I'm telling you, everybody was messy. It's a part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's okay. I think that's so good. I think that's really good advice. Like you just have to start and you have to keep going. You're not even going to realize it's the looking back. Oh my gosh. When I look back at my first like 20 sign listings, I save them to remind myself. Like when I feel like I'm not having a good season or I'm not happy with where I'm at. I go back and I look at my first designs and I'm like, okay, I've made progress. I may yeah, not be where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be either. That's so funny. And like, the thing is, even if you are a good designer, like another piece of this, like not necessarily ugly, but like understanding that business is about serving other people. So I see a lot of people like designing things that they like for themselves. Um, whereas like, you're not going to be the person buying your t-shirts. You should be designing things for other people. Okay. So you've heard me say it again and again, your SEO or search engine optimization is critical to your success on Etsy. I mean, if shoppers can't find your products, they certainly won't be buying them, right? So the key is to figure out exactly what people are typing into that Etsy search bar when they're shopping for products just like yours. But how? Like I get emails and DMs and social media comments on the regular from you guys. And so many of you are looking for help on this. Like SEO is a major pain point for a lot of you. You want to know how on earth you can get into your customers' minds Find the keywords that will help make your products bestsellers and strategically place them in your listings to make sure they're fully optimized. I heard you <laughs> and now I've got you friends. I put together a resource to help you understand and master the important skill of SEO. It's called the Etsy SEO Workshop and it will literally teach you the exact strategy that I used to build my full-time multiple six-figure Etsy shop. It's the same strategy I use today. I'm unveiling all of it. I'm holding none of it back. You can get access to it right now at howtosellyourstuff.com forward slash SEO. Again, that's howtosellyourstuff.com forward slash SEO. And I will show you step-by-step -step how to find best selling SEO for your products, including strategic deep dives into how I would do SEO research for five different niches. No matter what you're selling on Etsy, this workshop will show you how to compete in the Etsy search results and teach you research skills that you can use in countless business applications. I use this all the time. Again, you can find the workshop at howtosellyourstuff.com forward slash SEO or visit the link I have waiting for you in the show notes. I'm so excited, you guys. I can't wait to hear your success stories. So that and things that fall into that are like, you trying to use different aesthetics and different fonts and different niches. And we'll get into this a little bit more in this conversation, but just keep in mind that business is about serving other people. It's not about what you like or what you think looks good. It's about keeping up with the trends and the aesthetics and the fonts um, that, uh, that are for other people. That's a good smack in the face for me too, because I really um, resist some of the contemporaries, like some of what's trending. Like it's just not an aesthetic that I like at all. I yeah. love, I either want something neon or something neutral. And I like, again, I say this all the time, like kind of campy and like yeah. you show me retro and I want to gag. <laughs> you show me <laughs> oh like those bubble God. letters. And I'm just like, I, I don't want to wear, I don't like that. Yeah. I, don't. I know I'm an old fuddy duddy, but I don't, but I realize 
I but I love create- the, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this conversation because like, guess what? I love like the retro and bubbly <laughs> and pastel colors. And like you and I are into a lot of the same things. Right. And like, say both of us are, let's, you just use the word campy. So let's just say we're both into camping. Well, you might want like a neutral, natural looking camping shirt. And I might want a retro, retro pastel camping shirt, you know? So you have to think of all the different perspectives. It's not about like what you would wear on a shirt. It's what all these other people would wear. That's so There's good. no sense in de- designing for one mind. You want to design for all the different perspectives out there. You know who I noticed um, does this really well is because I'm such a I'm such a geek for them. Is the Life is Good brand? Yeah, I don't know if they have cute at them. Okay, so like yeah. I have been a diehard Life is Good fan. By the way, you guys, that book I should link it for you. The Life is Good brand story, like yeah. their actual business story, is phenomenal. Yeah. That is one of my favorite books. Oh, if you haven't read it, it's such okay. It's as beach ready as a business book is going to get. Life. Like you just like fly through it. You just it's so enjoy. It. But the point is, is that when I go to their website now and I look at like the newer designs, I hate them. And I'm like, can we just go back to like traditional? <laughs> I life know. Is good? Oh yeah. They're yes, trying to branch out. They're trying to branch out, probably. They're trying to hit everybody, but I, I will say, yeah. like, if I go back to like the last pages, <laughs> yeah. If I go to the clearance section, if I go to the, I can find stuff that I that I like. Like, they're doing a good yeah. job of trying to serve everybody. I'm just, I'm just older. Yeah, it's fine. but you know what that is too. <clears throat> I love this conversation because this is like going off where we weren't even, <laughs> we weren't even <laughs> going to talk about this, but this is a good topic. Um. They are not an Etsy shop. So they are, right. they built, they built themselves up as a brand, right? So like when you say life is good, I can picture some of their designs in my head just from seeing some of their products, like in stores, they branded themselves so well that I have a picture of them in mind. You know what I mean? But whereas with Etsy print on demand, we're not focused on branding ourselves. There's there's just such like a large audience of people to where you can hit like as many different niches as you want and as many different design aesthetics as you want. If that makes sense. It makes There's a difference sense. between like a brick and mortar shop or like a Shopify, like niched down website. They're so different from having an Etsy print on demand store. And ironically, Life is Good has, again, gotten away from that brand that they built. Right. They're trying to, but look, you don't like it because you're so used to their brand. Oh, yeah. You know, they're trying to. Also very stubborn. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, they realized in the market, like, they are not the provider of choice for T-shirts anymore. I still think they're doing fine. But, you know, like, they're branching out to being more, uh, serving a a wider group of people. Good for them. I'll have to look up their new stuff. I know this is such a little a fun little segue. Actually, I'm glad we talked about that because yeah. then there's a whole branding, be a whole other right episode. <laughs> there could be a hundred of them, but I okay. We kind of were starting to do it, and I don't know how much more you want to add to it, but I did want to specifically ask you, like, if you could maybe bullet point for us, what was your journey, your process of becoming a best selling designer? Like, I understand the gen, the you know, you have to just design a lot of bad stuff to get good yeah. to get better. But is there more to it? Is there anything else you want to say about that journey? Yeah. So I didn't know, like now looking back, I'm able to give you bullet points, but like when I was in the (laughs) process of it, I wouldn't have been able to be like, this is what I'm doing to get better at design. But like, I'm so happy to be able to give my experience to like help people kind of fast track through this like uncomfortable process. So yeah, the main thing is um, just getting messy and having fun. Okay. We are so like, rigid and programmed now I feel like to where we're not like that five-year-old anymore that could just like color and just be so creative and not care what anybody thinks about our work and just feeling bliss like in the flow state you know like you want to try to get back to that like have fun in the design process don't overthink it don't force anything if you feel yourself forcing it and it's not working out for you get up and walk away from it or do SEO research or something else, maybe discard that design completely or go back to it and try to like go with like into it with a clear mind, like the next day or something. Um, 
also being able to understand like that there's a whole research process behind even designing. Um, so it's important, you know, what niches are you designing in? Your SEO, um, trend research, aesthetic research, font research. Like there's a lot that if you get really good at researching, you're going to get really fast and really good at designing. Okay. But again, oh, cool. these things, a lot of these things come from um, trial and error, from like keeping an open mind, from keeping your eye out on the trends. Um, but yeah, like if you prime yourself with being familiar with what's already selling for other sellers, it will help you in your own design process. And then last but not least, I would say, I don't want to overwhelm anybody. I don't want anybody to think like they have to become this amazing designer or this like amazing graphic artist. Simple sells. I want you to remember yes. those two words, simple sells. So if you have that good research base and you're able to find like <clears throat> niches that have lower competition and higher demand, you can make a very simple shirt and it will sell. And by simple, I mean just like a text-based shirt. My husband um, has an Etsy shop as well. And I think he maybe has like 10 shirts that have graphics on it. He has thousands of shirts that just have words on them and they sell because he did his research prior to designing, you know? So simple sells. Just, just remember that you don't have to be an amazing artist. Like you could literally think of like a funny saying, put it in a big, bold text and it, it'll sell. If you, if you did the proper research, if you have the proper SEO, if your mock-up is good, you know, of course there's other factors that are involved, but I've seen it. I've seen simple sell over and over. It's funny because a lot of the times the designs that I made that took me hours and um, like put my heart and soul into them, they didn't end up selling, right? And it's the ones that took me like five minutes of effortless work that sell over and over again. So that's the other thing too I learned over the way is like, don't, <clears throat> like you want to have fun with this but don't ever get too attached to any of your listings. You want to design, put it on a mock-up, list it, forget about it. Design, put it on a mock-up, list it, forget about it. Don't ever get attached. Like, why is this one not selling? I thought this idea was so good. Why is this not selling? Don't get caught up in that. If it sells, awesome. If it sells a couple times, awesome. Now, if it sells at least three times, this is when like an alarm should be going off in your head and you're going to design more similar things in that niche using the same SEO to drive similar traffic to your shop. That's a whole thing too. I'm getting off on a tangent, tangent, but I this is that. all yeah. really important. Um, I'm here for the tangents. So yeah, no attachments, letting go, letting go. Because remember, <laughs> it's not about you. <laughs> I, was, I just had to like bite my tongue so I didn't sing the Frozen song. It almost came out. <laughs> <laughs> it almost well, I wanted to say like we've got a guys just so you know Jenny and I we geek out all the time about like mindset stuff like we are it's very practical but there's also woo woo to it if you guys yeah. want us to do an episode just on that please tell us because I know that like a lot of people don't want to hear anything about that but there's some people who are really here for it so like let us know or maybe we need to do a little like master class or something well I'm actually working on a court a mindset like course thing. oh my gosh you're gonna do a whole a whole full out course on it Yes, you guys are the first to hear this. I have the outlines for it ready. So it's just a matter uh, of me. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's just a matter of me filming it before this baby comes. I need to get it done before the baby comes or else it won't get done. But You're having quadruplets. You've got the new design course. You've got the house. You've got the yes. actual baby. And now you've got this. I you told are just a fertility goddess. We're literally like timeline hopping right now. Like it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good Jenny I like all of that and then I mean I think I already know your answer to this but like it's probably worth just touching on you know does somebody 
does someone have to at least have a little bit of artistic talent they were kind of born with? Or are there little skills they can pick up here and there and they can learn and they can develop it even though they don't necessarily have any inclination artistically? Yeah, no, you do not have to be artistic at all. Of course, it'll help you. It'll help you and it'll hurt you. It'll (laughs) help you, (laughs) truly, because if you... If you were born art- artistic and you're like, I, I kind of was, I could like paint like acrylic paintings and stuff. And I feel like I have an eye for like colors that go well together and stuff like that. Um, so that kind of helps, but like, you don't need that. I almost feel like if you are a really good artist, you're going to just want to design that way. And then that's not going to hit all the different types of people's perspectives, you know, like you'll be really stubborn and set in your own like creativity that you're used to whereas if you weren't an artist like this is exciting because you can like practice and explore all new different ways of designing right now you know um and then just taking it back to simple cells you don't have to be an artist to do this simple cells my husband's not um he's like a musical artist but he's not like a painter (laughs) painting artist, artist. you know what I mean? So like he has no art. If if there's a graphic in his shop, it's because I made it for him. What is that? Like? <laughs> <You're joking. laughs> He'll be like, can you make me something that <laughs> I swear? <laughs> <if there's... laughs> so, um, but he's really clever with coming up with the text-based ones. So sometimes he helps me out there, but yeah, so simple cells, his is mostly text-based. And then there's my parents who are in their sixties and they're doing well too. And they don't really have, they don't have artistic backgrounds. My mom does a little bit like me, but my dad doesn't. Um, so yeah, it just shows you the simple cells and being able to keep up with the like recent research and everything like that. But no, you don't, you don't need to be an artist. I think that's so encouraging that, you know, you may have to work a little harder. You may need to study. You may need to learn from somebody. I I have that happen all the time where, I mean, I'm actually artistically inclined. I was born artistically inclined, but um, I do not have good intuition about some things artistically. And I have to learn from someone else how to, how to get a certain look or how to get something to, you know, like the opacity thing. Like there's things that I don't see that I should see. Um, that I feel like I should see, but I need to be taught like, oh no, look for this. And then I can, then I can get it. Um, Right. Yeah. What do you think are some of the styles that buyers are really drawn to right now? Well, um, I'm not trying to make you cringe or anything, but like retro, (laughs) retro is really in right now. (laughs) When is it going to end? Retro is really in right now. Um, especially like those, bubbly wavy letters um I think they're adorable I think they're adorable (laughs) you're a lot Um, younger than me (laughs) stop it um but yeah so retro is in and then also like this is a whole nother like design thing um back of the shirt designs are in yeah so that's the other thing to keep in mind when you have if you have a design that's like taking off say it's on the front of your shirt you want to do more things with that design. Like you can take that one design that's selling really good on the front of your shirt. And if it would look good as a pocket design, then scale it smaller on the mock-up and make it a pocket design shirt. Okay. Or if it would look good on the back of a shirt, get a mock-up that is a back of a t-shirt mock-up and put the design on that too. And use the same SEO from that first design that's selling to drive pe- more people because they might want it on the pocket or the back of the shirt. So that's just an extra. There's so many factors to the design and mock-up area. But yeah, so right now, retro and back of the shirt designs are in. I actually like that. Now I kind of want a back of the design shirt. I need to go find one to buy. Oh, um, it's cute. It's a cute look. I yeah. also think those mock-ups would be really cute and like really catch someone's eye in the feed because it's different from all the front pictures that you see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm obsessed with tie-dye. I love tie-dye, but I guess you can't really do that as print on demand or it can't. They do know. have, Printify does have a tie-dye option. Um, I'm not sure what the pricing's like and I haven't okay. tested them, but they do have a tie-dye. Do you know how they look in real life? Like, are they actually cute in real life? I have never personally seen one, but I had a friend who purchased one. She said it was cute. I didn't see it in person. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. I'm here for the tie-dye. Yeah. 
Well, um, what do you think are some ways that someone could start improving their their designs? Some really practical ways. Obviously, practice. Um. Yes. One second. Let me see something. All right. So yeah, practicing. I always say your first. If you're a new Etsy shop seller, I always say your first goal should be to get up 100 designs in your shop. Not 100 okay. listings. 100 designs. Um, okay. Because then you're going to really start to get a feel for it. You're going to probably have made some sales by then and get a feel for what your customers are liking. Um, so yeah, try to get up to 100 designs. And again, they're, they're going to be messy, but I'm not saying like none of them are going to sell. Some of them should probably sell by the time you get to that 100th design and you're going to be much better at designing at that point. Um, and then keeping up with the trends keeping it simple. And then if all else fails and you're like really intimidated still by the actual design process, you can always purchase designs from Creative Fabrica or um, go on Etsy and purchase designs from Etsy. I never even thought to do that on Etsy. I love Creative yeah. Fabrica. Um, wow. And so Gosh, I think the trick there is which is finding one that's not all over shirts already on Etsy, right? You could do that yes. with a pretty quick search, some research. Yeah. So the trick for that is to tweak your creative fabric designs, if it, especially okay. if, it, if it's one that you've seen on Etsy already. Um, download it, bring it into GoDaddy Studios or Canva and add a text to it, a saying to it, or combine it with another graphic. Do something to it to make it your own so that you can stick out amongst the other Etsy competitors that are also using that design. Can you tweak colors on those or not really? Um, yeah, you can. I mean, some of those design platforms have like filterings that you can play around with it. I think that would be really cool, especially if you're seeing it and you can see that it's like a bestseller. It's doing really well. Just finding ways of hitting like like yeah. you said, you know, I, you and I both might love the same thing, but we'd have a different aesthetic we would be drawn to. Yeah. Do you think, um, you kind of touched on this, but I think it bears diving deeper into, do you think a shop should focus on designing in just one aesthetic? Like sh should we, you kind of create your own brand about that, like your own aesthetic that you're, or, or is it better to, to spray a really wide net? I, yeah. I hear conflicting information about this, so I'd love your take. Yeah. So there's definitely like some people say that, it's important to stick to one niche um, so that like the algorithm understands like who your audience is. But I honestly feel like that's more for if you have like a Shopify store, it's better to niche down if you have a Shopify store because you're going to be running ads to get people to come to your Shopify store. Whereas with Etsy, if you have um, good SEO, meaning titles and tags, people are able to organically find your listings. Um, so whatever the title is to any of your listings, people, it's going to pop up for them if you have the right keywords that they're searching for. Um, so I always say that like the more fishing poles, the more fish. Um, I have hundreds of niches in my Etsy shops. So and I, and I don't have a problem with traffic coming. I like to look at like each listing almost like as its own individual shop. You know, like people aren't going wow. to Etsy and typing my shop name into the search. They're going to Etsy because they have a shirt in mind that they want. So they're going to type in like, um, like retro bride shirt. Sorry, I keep saying retro. <laughs> they're going to type in. mildly triggered. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to type in like retro bride shirt into the search because that's what they want. And if I have a retro bride shirt and I used that in my titles and tags, then my shirt's going to pop up amongst all the other Etsy sellers that used retro bride shirt. So I like to look at each individual listing as almost like its own shop. It's very rare that someone's going to like type your shop into the search. They know the product that they want already. It's mm -hmm. rare that they're going to go to your shop. Like if you have like, if your listing set up properly, you want them to be able to just click on that listing that came up amongst all the other Etsy sellers, choose your size and check out. Most of the time they're not going to your shop. So more fishing poles, more fish. <laughs> <laughs> I did see, okay, I'll give, I will give this one little nod to retro. I did actually see yesterday 
a retro bride sweatshirt, but the font, it was a bubble font, but it was embroidered. So it was like a white sweatshirt with white embroidered um, thread. I was like, I would wear, that's gorgeous. It was so cool. I wonder if, I know print on demand, like you can get hats embroidered. It'd be cool if they would start embroidering shirts, sweatshirts, because I've seen that too. It we should, really we should both submit a suggestion. Be like, "Hey guys, yes. you know what? You know what you should do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should make embroidered I'm shirts. Going to, I'm going to tell them. We should do it. Mm-hmm. So, um, this this is what I'm really excited about. You just launched an incredible new design course, which we've been begging you for. Like all of TikTok, and all of your friends have been yes. begging you because it needs to be addressed in the Etsy community. So many people need it. Like I think that's one of the biggest questions we get is like, how do I get like I can, SEO is fine. It's like a mathematical equation. I can do the research and figure it out, but design, it's a different skill set. So I would love for you to tell us about the course, kind of what inspired you to make it, what, you know, what, what will it help us with that kind of thing? Sure. So this has been something that's been on my mind for a really long time now. I've gotten a lot of comments from followers asking for help in the design area. And I was always like nervous to do it because it was hard for me, to be honest with you. It was hard, one of my hardest things to learn throughout my Etsy print on demand journey. But now I feel like confident and comfortable enough to like share my experiences with everyone and share everything that I've learned to kind of help people fast track through this whole design process um, and try to make it like less messy for you. <laughs> Honestly, what a <laughs> gift. If you can help us fast track that mess. Yeah. <laughs> so like the cool thing about it is like when I was thinking about this course, I was like, I envisioned myself like teaching all different types of designs. But then when I really like thought about it, I'm like the biggest part about being successful with design and with Etsy print on demand is really the um, research that leads up to a design. And a lot of people sleep on that. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and they'll just jump into their iPad and start designing. But and, like, I'm guilty of that. I used to do that. But it's really, like I said, how business is about serving others. And that's such a hard like hump to get over because, you know, you have your own interests and your own preferences, and it's more fun for you to design like that. You're not going to make any money if that's... <laughs> If that's what you continue to do, of course, like maybe somebody will like knitting because you like knitting, like I'm not saying knitting's a bad niche or a bad, whatever. Like maybe if you like knitting and you put up a design in it, someone will buy it. But like what I'm saying is like you like just spread your wings and get into all different niches, even if it's a niche that you don't like even know about, you need to do your research and learn about these things. Um, But anyways... I'm just getting off topic again, but have so you even said you'll design like opposite things? Like you'll design like things that totally disagree with each other, um, like opposite opinions, but you'll design for both. Oh yeah, I do that. That's so cool. I think. Yeah, but you know what's interesting? If it's like a political thing, <laughs> this could be a whole other. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Like, this could be a whole other like fun um, conversation. Like, so I follow the money, guys. Like. I, not many of my family or friends know about my Etsy shop. And when I tell them, I'm like, please don't judge me. I'm not into all (laughs) these things. I'm just following the money because I know it's what's selling. So like, if there's like a political thing going on and like, I like design for both sides, I've gotten reached out to by customers, like angry that I'm supporting both sides. And I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) So you will get that sometimes. Like if you're supporting, like, or not even supporting if you're just creating for things, Hot you know, I mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're in a heated yeah. environment right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But anyways, back to the course, no, I <laughs> um, think it's, I think my it's course good. is going to teach you like one, how to follow the money. So basically like the first half of it is all about the researching part, how to find, deeper niches to design in um, that aren't like so broad or so saturated, Um, different trends, different aesthetics, different fonts, um, just like all the research behind it before you even touch your iPad or laptop, whatever it is that you decide to design on. 
And then the second half is me showing you how to navigate through GoDaddy Studios. That is my main um, choice for my design platform. There's a free version of it. And then I'm not sure how much the paid version, I feel like it was like $10. Like it wasn't anything crazy to get like a little bit more. Um, but anyways, I use GoDaddy Studios, but everything I teach in this course can be used on Canva or Procreate, whatever you prefer. But I show how to navigate through that app and then um, show how to do a different couple different design aesthetics. I show how to properly purchase mock-ups, how to properly bring a design on a mock-up. Um, and then a ton of like hidden gems along the way. Kind of like how Lizzie and I just got off topic like a bunch of times, but it was all good information. Like you're going to hear me get off topic a bunch of times, but it's all golden nuggets that are going to help you scale your Etsy business basically. But this is the best piece of work that I've ever put out for my following. I think because I care so much about this piece of Etsy print on demand. It's a huge piece of becoming successful. It's a, it was a huge thing that I had to learn and overcome. Um, so I'm just like excited to share it with other people. Can you tell me, cause I'm, I'm curious. I, I don't, I don't remember what it was and I think it's helpful for everyone else to what is it that you prefer about GoDaddy Studios? I know you had a good reason for it. I don't have a good reason for it. Um, you don't. It's really, no, not really. So nothing against Canva at all. I use Canva sometimes. Um, it's really just that it's the first platform that I started designing on, and I found it really easy to navigate. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of stuck with it because it worked for me. Um. They offer graphics that you can use on there. It's not like Canva where they say like you can't use certain graphics from there. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but they won't let you just take a graphic and put it on a shirt and sell it from Canva. Like you can't, you have to combine it and drastically change it. Whereas GoDaddy Studios are more lenient with what you use. And there's all different fonts that you can use. Um, and it's just really easy to navigate. It's very beginner friendly. I love that. I think and that's I what we need. Yeah. Canva and used I, to be that. I feel like it used to be that. And, and they've made a lot of awesome improvements. I actually love Canva. I use a whole bunch of different software because there's things, everyone does, has different things that they can do. Yeah. Um, but Canva is no longer the like easy, intuitive entry level. Like now it's a little more flashy. So I love that GoDaddy yeah. Studios is easier for the new yeah. the beginner. That's the other thing that we can like tie into the keeping it simple. Like you could go crazy on Canva. There are so many different things you can do that can make your designs look really cool. But I'm telling you with the simplicity of GoDaddy Studios, you can still make amazing designs. I think that's cool. I think that really differentiates yeah. you in the marketplace, Jenny, is that you're providing, you're answering really what the big question is, which is how can this be made easier? How can the yeah. beginner learn how to do this? How can we get from terrible to knowing what we're doing a little better faster? Yeah. Like you're answering that question. And I love that. I love, right. I love, love, love supporting everything you do. It's so Thank quality. You. Where, Where like, um, please. I was going to say, I, I like, I think one of the beginning videos in my course um, says, like, I'm telling you that, like, when you're done this course, you're not going to be an amazing graphic artist. Like, I don't want your ex expectation to be like, I'm going to take Jenny's course and I'm going to be a graphic designer, you know, and I'm going to have all these different design techniques under my belt. Like, you will have a little bit of that, but I wanted to take the weight off of their shoulders to know that, like, it's not about becoming, like, a, an amazing graphic designer to be successful with Etsy print on demand because you don't need to be if you that's have the all beauty. these yeah that's the beauty I love that <clears throat> I think um there's something there it's a huge gift to be able to look over your shoulder as someone who's already a proven best-selling designer who's been through yeah. the ringer you know you didn't just come out being really good at this I actually think that makes you like that's like the ideal teacher right is the person who had the person who was terrible at math as a kid you want as your math teacher because they had to learn yeah. how to really yeah. do it so like to look over your shoulder I think is a huge true uh, that's a blessing that's an asset yeah for sure yeah and I and yeah during the 
like, you know, when in my beginning days, I would have never thought that I would be teaching people about design. Like I would have laughed, I would have laughed, but you're right. I've been through every little piece of it. That was a chance. It was the most challenging part of my journey was learning the design piece. I'm, I'm really grateful to you for creating this. Like I need it. So many of my followers and um, students need it and we're going to utilize it. So thank you. And also thank you for, you're always so generous on these episodes. Like you always share so much. I can't. Like, have no, I can't. <laughs> you have no oh. filter. It's amazing. It's the best. Thank you. I really can't help it. I don't know. I'm just excited to share. You know, I like, I don't gatekeep. I think there's enough room for everyone at the table. Yeah. Um so I'm happy to give my information. I couldn't agree more. And this is this is one of the many reasons why we adore you. Um, well, I where adore are the best you. places? Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> if this is like BFS forever. Yes, it's just in, it's like written in the stars. Where yes. are the best places for people to follow you? And I know you're going to say TikTok, which is good. And I want you to say where, but I'm just telling you, I'm going to be watching for that TikTok that shows your original designs. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is on. The I need to see on. what they looked like at the beginning. If I didn't delete them, I was so embarrassed. But I'm sure I probably saved some for the record. You so deleted I'll... them? No, you saved I don't that. Know. That's like when you lose 100 pounds, you save your before picture. I think we should start a trend and get <laughs> no. all of the Etsy people to share their original. Like we need to start a oh TikTok trend. Share That's... your like where you were and where you are. Like your yeah. I'm sure I have it somewhere. It just haunts me. But yeah, you're so funny. <laughs> you need to. Sh- <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so right. I will look for it. I will. I think that's like a marketing tactic for your course. <laughs> like, let me show you where I've come from to where I am. Um, oh, maybe go back to your old Etsy, like your your old. I don't know if you totally delete them or if you just deactivate. Oh, I deleted them. I was so like <laughs> embarrassed. They're gone. Okay, they're gone forever. Burned. Burned. Okay, where do we follow you? Okay, so so bad. So right now, mostly on TikTok, Jenny from the shop with two P's, S H O P P. Um, And I'm trying to branch out more in 2023. There's um, talks of a YouTube on the horizon. So I actually have a YouTube handle already where I put some of my YouTube shorts up, but there's no long form content yet, but be on the lookout for that. So you can subscribe to me at Jenny from the shop, two peas on, um, YouTube. And I like to keep it simple. That's basically it right now. <laughs> I think that's great. I like that you do that. Um, it's, it's just, it just, uh, what's what I'm trying to say? Streamlines everything. Yeah. I think we have dropped some gold. You guys, I hope that you have totally enjoyed this. It's a different subject. It's an important subject. I'm excited about it. I, I'm very excited about print on demand. I think there's a lot of opportunity right now and I'm very curious about other products other than I love a t-shirt or a sweatshirt, but I'm really curious about some of the other possibilities. Yeah, Totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. One last hidden gem for everybody. One last like golden tip is like, don't be afraid to try out other products, especially if you have like a best selling design on a t-shirt. Don't be afraid to put that. We'll definitely put it on a a sweatshirt too, but don't be afraid to put that same design on a mug and use the same SEO, but swap out t-shirt for mug in your titles and tags Um, and tote bags are big too. So put that design on a tote bag, use the same titles and tags from that best-selling t-shirt, but wherever it says t-shirt in your titles and tags, you're going to put tote bag or bag. Um, So that's a golden gem as well. I think it is amazing. And then what I always did is I'd go into my listing description and I have links and I'd be like, love this design, but want a different product. And then I'd be like sweatshirt colon you know and I'd be like yeah. mug colon bag colon hat colon and then you link them all totally. so cool. they can find cool. it within your shop yeah for sure another amazing golden gem. another golden this gem was, this was a riot this was a blast <laughs> you guys let us know if you want that um, mindset episode thank you yeah. so much for being it here with so us fun. today we love you we love you we're excited for you thank print on demand is a great space to be mm-hmm. Jenny thank you Thank you so much, Lizzie. And thank you, everybody, (laughs) for supporting Lizzie and I. We truly appreciate it. Immensely grateful, you guys. Until next time, go make something awesome. And that's a wrap on this episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. 
If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.